Officially, the success of the Cuban Revolution was January 1, 1959, but the 11-day battle that took place in November 1958 between Fidel Castro's forces, which included his brother Raul and Che Guevara, was decisive in ousting the U.S.-backed dictator Batista. This battle took place in the Sierra Maestra Mountains, just outside the town of Giza. Fidel came back to Cuba, landing in the Sierra Maestras from his exile in Mexico in an old American yacht called the Grandma. I lived with a wonderful family that I've known for 11 years. Junior was only 19 years old when I first met him. He's now 30 and teaches English at the university in Havana. While I was drinking beer with Junior at a restaurant perched in the mountains, a beautiful old car pulled into the parking lot. Its brakes failed and the car plunged over the side. Luckily no one was hurt but the car. Global warming has created drought in Cuba. This is supposed to be its heavy rainy season, but fires are seen frequently and the people battle fires like this one on a daily basis. These five men passed information from Miami to Havana and are presently languishing in a U.S. prison. In Cuba, they are viewed as heroes. This is the home of Carlos Alcalair. He has published five books of political poetry. He's also a personal friend of Fidel's and a former revolutionary that fought in the 1958 Battle of Giza. He is very, very famous in Cuba and people there all seem to love him very much. The next day, Mr. Alcalar took me to visit the place where Batista's forces were ambushed by Castro and his men. Though they had tanks, the revolutionaries were victorious. We are now at the spot where the ambush actually took place. These are the graves of three of the revolutionary soldiers that were killed by Batista's tank fire. One of them is an unknown soldier. Carlos Alcalar then took us to another place in the mountains where Fidel had his command post. It was strategically important and had a huge cave which was used by the revolutionaries. Later, it became a hospital for wounded soldiers. Here Alcalar poses in front of a plaque commemorating this historic spot. Alcalar explains to us that after the battle was completed in Giza, the troops moved on to Santiago. From there, they moved into Havana. But Batista, long gone by air. 
Columbus called this mountain Sia de Gabara because it's shaped like a horse saddle. On our way back to the resort, we came across a very large convoy filled with soldiers and machine guns. They weren't allowed to let anyone pass them. It was a long drive home. After seeing these historic sites, we went into the town square. It was Saturday night, so almost everyone came out to drink rum and dance all night long. Power blackouts were disrupting the music all night, but people still had fun. Most of the people just kept red dancing in a way that amounted to nothing more than foreplay for the sex that they would be enjoying in the early morning hours. Castro's mentor and the father of modern Cuban revolution is Jose Marti, seen here in the town square. As you know, we have the full power in Cuba. The revolution destroyed all the enemy army after a hard fight. And when we took the power, which were our systems, free press to every body.